So here's Fire Emblem Shrine. That's like the big surprise of this game. Holy crap, they went back to Dark Souls 1. Literally with Fire Emblem Shrine, there's a Shrine Maiden. Now if you look at these five thrones, and you look carefully at this one here that my head's lined up with, there's a man sitting there. I've seen more than one person miss that guy and be confused as to where Soul's transpos transposition takes place. That's the guy. He's on that throne. You just need to find him. So let's talk to you. Ah, another one roused <clears throat> from the sleep of death. Well, you're not alone. We unkindled are worthless. Can't even die right. <laughs> what a happy downer. <laughs> and they'd have us seek the Lords of Cinder and return them to their molding thrones. But we're talking true legends with the metal to link the fire. We're not fit to lick their boots. Yep, Don't time to <laughs> Now I will admit I actually died on that first boss fight like three times. My first playthrough. So I've clearly learned a lot. Sick joke. Asking us to seek the Lords of Cinder and return them to their molding thrones. We're talking true legends. Those who... And you're repeating yourself. So I believe this guy just repeats himself for a while now. So I'm not going to talk to him anymore. Now before I head down there, there's actually one little area that I know a few other people missed, and that's because they're bad at exploring. But you just head up these stairs, and there's this whole area here. So what's up here? This is back. And this is exactly what you think it is if you play Dark Souls 2. It's, it's the thing that gives you the seed of the Tree of Giants. If you get invaded too much, and you die... To, I think if you die to invaders X amount of times, it just drops a seed. And this is locked. We'll get the key for that later. It's actually a fairly expensive key. And that ladder can be kicked down, but that's for later too. It'll actually be a fair bit later. Like, unlike Dark Souls 1 and 2, like, the crows in this game, which are in every single game, you have to do some work to get to them. And by work, I mean you have to spend a fair amount of souls. It's totally worth it for the item that's in that tower. There's actually a few of them, but... There's one specific item in that tower that's completely worth it. Welcome to the bonfire, unkindled one. I am a firekeeper. I tend to the flame and tend to thee. The lords have left their thrones and must be delivered to them. To this end, I am at thy side. So now we can level up. Then touch the darkness within me. Take nourishment from these sovereignless souls. Okay. So fun fact, in that walk animation up there to take to take the knee, it's actually possible, depending on where you're standing, to can't to accidentally cancel the level up screen because your character can't take the knee in that position. It mostly happens when she's seen on the stairs. Because for some reason, I guess the screen is tied into you taking the knee. It's weird. I'm not even sure if they're going to patch that because you can usually just fix it by talking to her again. So we've got a bunch of level ups. I'm pretty much thinking of the strength build, but I know I'm going to need more decks for some weapons. So I'm going to get my decks to 12. Just as a start, I'm gonna get to equip load the 14, and I don't even have two level ups. I'll just get health to 15. The faster I can get my health to and endurance to 20, the better, because I find you really don't need to pump strength and dexterity this early in the game. And the luck stat's back. What does the luck stat do? Well, I am Discovery, and that's about it, until you get, like, way later in the game where you start finding certain stones and reading the descriptions, and then you realize, oh wait, there's a use for luck stones, but it's fucking stupid. Farewell, I've made a flame. It's like a hidden scaling thing 
for certain types of weapons. And that's all there is to lock. So yeah, looking down this hallway always kills my frames. I don't know what, what it is about Andre that eats my frame rate, but there he is. Pleasure to make thine acquaintance, Ashen One. I am but a humble handmaid of the shrine. Weapons, armor, trinkets, and spells. I've lots of little things to ease the burden of a weary traveler. And yes, I'm undead too, but not so charitable as to give my goods away. Ashen One, fetch souls and bring them to me. As is thy want, no? <laughs> so here's your merchant. Same kind of thing as the Dark Souls 2 merchant. Old lady who just sits there and laughs at you and asks you to buy items. Now the way she works is you can give her ashes and she'll update her wares, but for the most part there's really nothing she sells that's overly useful. There's the White Sign Soapstone, which I will buy just in case. But that's about the only thing that she sells that I'd consider buying. Like most of the shields she sells aren't very good. I'm tempted to go for the Large Leather Shield, but I don't have the Soul Sport right now. I mostly want it just because it's got decent magic resistances and I think better physical block than my current one. Unless I am using a Large Leather Shield. Can't check from that inventory, but we'll talk Passion to her. One. If my wares are not to thy satisfaction, bring me umbral ash. With ash, I'll fashion new wares. Is it not our sorry fate to sup on death? <laughs> and then she laughs. Ashen one, be yes, sure we should have been more souls. More souls. Yeah. Sorry if I'm sounding a little bit impatient. The amount of times I have heard this dialogue from her is ridiculous. So, let's see. I know I have some fading souls here. And those are basically 50 each, so I will use two of those. In case I do, in fact, want to go for that shield. Actually, this shield blocks one more point of physical. And weighs 3.5. How much is that layer wow. shield weigh? How? Also 3.5. There's no point to the leather shield. Ashen See what one. I mean by like a lot of her wares are pointless? So I'd go explore down there, but there's literally nothing down here right now. <clears throat> Once we get more NPCs later on, that this area will fill out a little bit. It still feels mostly empty, though. Well, a newcomer, I see. I am Andre. I serve at this shrine as a humble smith forging weapons. Andre has a lot to say. You're in search of the Lords of Cinder, I trust. A toilsome journey, I wager. You require good arms. Let me smith you weapons. I am a smith. Such is my purpose. So here we get reinforcement, infusion, repairs, which I have never had to use all game. I know there's stuff that breaks your equipment, but I have never actually had my equipment break this game. It's not like Dark Souls 2, where it was more likely to happen. You would... it's very rare, actually, for your equipment to break, because very similar to Dark Souls 2, you can just repair it out of bonfire automatically, so... So here's the Estus allotment, which I am going to do because I'm not using magic. The Ashen Flasks are for magic, the regular flasks are for health. I'm not using magic this playthrough, so I really don't need it. I might need it for the Yorn fight just because my FP I think is the lowest of all starting builds. But we'll get to that bridge when we get there. So I know I don't have any Estus shards, so... Infusion is for turning weapons into fire weapons. And I could make a fire axe. I don't want to make a fire axe. 
because I'm going to get a D-Pack soon and I might just let that carry me through most of the game again. So reinforcement, I have not enough Titanite shards, so we're not even going to worry about that. Now I can talk to Andre four times and he can tell weapons me and protection all about the weapons and the protection large, but when over and how they break and how that's you. never going to happen. Unless I get unlucky. Is low, repair becomes Speaking of getting unlucky, I think the area where a breaking can happen or simply rest at a is actually the area where my game but crashes nine times out. Yeah. Yes, there's still, there's still crash bugs in this. Back into shape. I'm hoping they get patched they out. Take no pleasure in breaking, I assure you. So handle them with care, if you would. But I think most of the crashes in this game are associated with reflections on certain armors and lighting. And the places where my game has crashed, surprisingly not in this area, which is one of the laggiest for me. Like, World of Sacrifices I've crashed once, just entering the area. And I crashed right in front of the bonfire, and that really made me sad, but luckily the all safe was right there. Like, you have no idea how fucking sad I was when I, my game crashed before I sat at a bonfire. Like, it was infinite despair. There are two ways for like, to minute. smith weapons. Simple reinforcement is one, and infusion the other. Reinforcement is straightforward. It strengthens a weapon without altering its property. Infusion is a more advanced form of smithing that infuses an element. Reinforcement requires titanite, and infusion requires gems. Bring the stones, and I'll do the smithing. It's my purpose, after all. Yep. In battle, your weapons are your only friends. Forge them well, and they won't let you down. Well, thank you, Andre, for the gesture. Now, if you talk to him one more time... Ah, another matter. Infusing weapons with gems requires a special kind of coal. And now we're getting into it. My humble coals won't be any use infusing more unusual gems. I know, it's an awful shame, but it's all I have. Oh, please don't give me that look. Believe it or not, I'm quite thin-skinned. <laughs> I know some of you might be thinking already who have played Dark Souls 1, is this game actually in Dark Souls 1? The answer I will give you is... pretty much yes. Like, I mean, there are new areas, but a lot of these areas are very reminiscent of Dark Souls 1. And as a matter of fact, there's a couple areas later on that are just straight up taken from Dark Souls 1. And just retextured and remodeled. But they're basically the same area. To a T. Anything else, Andre? Oh, by the way, if you find any Estus shards, bring them here. Thank you for telling me what was in the menu. Used to reinforce either of your Estus flasks. Without those flasks, you'd want for life or focus. And they'll always stay with you. Why not treat them well? Indeed. <laughs> Pretty big. I don't want to see it. Yes, be careful. You don't want to see your work squandered. I've heard that line about 500 times. So here we go. 14 frames a second. Hooray. My favorite. Now, you can be the covenant thing what yet. A sick joke. Asking us the talking truth. Yeah, you don't get it yet. I think I might actually have to light the fire first. I should probably do that. This coiled sword's been saving my inventory for a while. I probably should have read the description. Whoops. It's basically the sword that sits at every bonfire. And putting it in this bonfire enables you to teleport. From any bonfire. Because this is basically the starting point of Dark Souls 1. Or so it's implied, but it's not really. No, the starting point of Dark Souls 1 isn't really in this game. Or maybe it is, but I don't really think of this. Like, so far, this starry area doesn't look like anything from Dark Souls 1. I mean, the design of this room kind of looks like an older version, maybe, of the Firelink Shrine area from Dark Souls 1, like, before it became all open and dilapidated, but... <clears throat> That's just with the arches and the round shape. For the most part, it looks completely different. 
So we can travel now, but I'm not going to travel anywhere right now. Right now, I've got a little man I want to fight. So we'll go deal with that. See, so yeah, looking out this door brings my frames to like 11. As you can probably tell. Like, the frame rate issues in this game are really weird and they're always directional based and I'm really confused as to why that is. I guess it's just trying to load too much in front of me when I look there. It's a vision comb problem and there's absolutely no options I can change in game to fix that. So this guy very dangerous because he can do that yes he has rush downs now, thankfully the Uchi is pretty slow in this game and I know how it moves And I can backstab him. Drink. We're not training anymore. Training is bad. Oh, this guy anyway. So at least the nice thing about this guy is he doesn't seem to be able to heal. Well, I'm out last. It's alright. So I have to be very careful about this guy. Because like I said, this, this man is super deadly. He's probably the most dangerous NPC in the early game area in the Souls game. And he's smart enough to fly off the ledge. Which is what makes him particularly... And... Yeah, I figured I'd die to this guy a few times. He is really quite tough. Especially early on. I could probably parry him, but I'm not very confident in my parry game. I've actually tried to parry a few of the bosses in this game. I think they've learned from Dark Souls 1 to not let you parry bosses. So first death to Uchi Man. Not really a surprise, and for some reason this happens whenever you respawn here. There's like a fog gate, and I'm not quite sure why. I think it's trying to load area. But I find if you just kind of backstep against it, it seems to load in whatever it's trying to load in faster. Or not. Okay. Well, fine, I'll go up the airway. If you're good. Oh, there it is. I don't know why that happens. I think it's just a loading thing to prevent crashes. Because it probably has to reload the area when you respawn. So how much damage did I do two handing compared to one? An extra 20 damage? Might need that. My swings are way slower though. But it's only an extra 20 damage. Uh no, I'll just do that. Do this. Shouldn't have let go of my shield. He has a parry. And he can stunlock you with the Uchi. I keep forgetting that. It's like a feature of the Uchi Katana. And he's done. And that's how you deal with Uchi, man. You let him deal with himself. 2,000 souls. That's another level. The problem is, he had the Uchi on him. So, the Uchi might be gone forever. 
But that's okay, because I had zero plan to use it. It is not very good in this game, because it does not have the Dark Souls 1 <coughs> thing to it. And by that, I mean it does not have, like, really fast swings. Like, there's a sword in the game that swings basically as fast as the Dark Souls 1 Uchi. Matter of fact, there's a few. Like, there's one that's... I think there's a sword that swings as fast as a dagger, actually. And that sword's actually pretty overpowered. But still. So, just to make sure that the Uchi is or isn't gone forever, I'm just going to sit down here. Which triggers all save and... I might have to actually leave the area and come back completely for this to happen. But I'm hoping the bonfire was enough to reset it. And I'll just do a cursory glance up over here. Is there an item up there? Why, well, as a matter of fact, there is. I wonder what that could be. It's the Uchi Katana, and some Masters of Tyrod I'll never be wearing, because it's crap. And that's the tower that doesn't open from that side. So you may have noticed that lady there in the shop had a key for sale. And that's like the one thing I'll buy from her. It's 20,000 souls. It's worth it. But I cannot afford that right now. And I probably won't be able to afford it till uh, significantly later in the game. I'll have to probably forsake some level ups to get it. That's fine. For now, let's just level up. Them up to oh shit, you're saying new shit. The homes of the lords converge. Yeah, basically she was like, yeah, put the quad sword in there, then you can go to Lothric. That's all she said. Very well, then touch them. And you almost say the same thing there. Uh, 16 health. Seems like a good investment. Trust me, health is actually more important early game than you think it is. Because look at where my health bar is right now, it's not particularly amazing. If I was in human form, it would be a little bit longer. It kind of goes by Dark Souls 2 rules, you die, you lose like a little bit of health. Unlike Dark Souls 2, it's not 10% every death, instead it's just a raw like 20 or 25% of your health is just gone. I think it's 20% in this game. And the Restore the Amber just gives you the full bar. And it doesn't keep going down, it just goes to 20%. So it's, in my opinion, a little bit more balanced, a little bit better. Now before shit gets out of hand, I'm just going to start dumping off stuff I will never use. Broken Straight Sword, the Uchi Katana, Cleric Sacred Chime, which I will more than likely never use. I don't have any spells anyway. No, I'm not using Miracles this playthrough. That's not getting used. Master's Attire. Which you can read the description of. It just says, you know, people like to make up tales about how shady their clothing is. And then there's, you know, you know, my sixth sense was uh, warning me of danger and then I danced around flurries of blades my clothes went to tatters. Sure you did, buddy. You just found that Uchi Katana and thought you were cool shit. Oh yeah, that's right, I need to travel. But let's go. To Lothric we go. Where the frame rate will still be bad. Like I said, the first few areas in this game, the frame rate is terrible. And it's gonna stay that way for a while. Like, for me, I find the frame rate is really bad until after the Cathedral of the Deep. And that's like four areas in. Five areas in, even. Like, I don't know why the frame rate's so bad. Like, once we get to the catacombs, I find the frame rate is a lot more manageable, for the most part. So here we are. As you can see, there's a little bowl here. A little bit of a coiled sword there. I guess that used to be a bonfire. Wonder who destroyed that. Probably some dickhead in here. So, the one thing I've noticed about this game is there's a lot more double opening doors. But it makes me wonder if... ...the doors was a buck or not. 
Because that's the one thing you could do in Dark Souls 2 is if it was a door that just had like... If it was just like a one door thing, you could just roll through the opening animation and open it faster. But because these are double opening doors and that doesn't happen with double opening... I don't know why I'm calling them double opening, as if that's a fucking thing. No, it's just things with like... Two doors. I don't know what the fuck I'm calling. I'm calling them double opening. I don't give a shit. So we have dogs. So there's one thing about dogs, it's that this axe will send them flying. Okay, these guys are actually fairly strong. But they can be staggered. Now you do that, and my frame rate is dying. Yeah. So, as you can tell, looking over here kills the frames. Keep that in mind. So, I gotta be very quick here because there is a guy here that is gonna ruin my day. Okay, if you don't kill that guy fast enough, he transforms and becomes a serious problem. And that's gonna be a recurring theme of this area later. I died to him actually a couple of times. Because he goes like Udix Gundir on you. And gets all like black tar and shit. And that's all good. All black tar. So there's a statue here. Nothing secret. I probably missed a lot of secret doors in this opening area. For the reason of I didn't know how secret doors worked in this game. Because in Dark Souls 2 you mash the A button along walls and then they open. In this game that doesn't work. In this game you have to actually physically hit the wall with your weapon. Like Dark Souls 1. So because of that, and because I didn't know that, that's probably actually... A thing I missed a lot in the early areas is secret walls. And because I'm not playing online, I'm not going to know any secret wall areas. And he's dead. Let's just look down to save the frame rate a little bit here. Like I said, the frame rate in this game is not great for me. Grab that. You have that fast sword. That sword is really good. I've never used it, but like the speed at which it slashes is kind of ridiculous. <clears throat> However, the axe for the early game is way more than good enough. Because there's nothing in this early game that's actually particularly uh, quick. Everything has fairly slow wind-ups. So you can... Like, at worst, you usually trade. That's what I will say. So, we'll see here. Give you a hit. Give you a hit. Fred. No damage to me because, you know, my health. So there's a man over here I'm going to want to deal with. Because he basically wakes up all the fighters. Yeah, your broken straight sword isn't doing shit. Now, my first playthrough actually missed the entire area above this. So I'll go back and do that later. But now I just want to run through here real quick. I lock on. Yeah, shield bash me. You're real good at your job. You're dead. <laughs> 